It's more than just your output, more than a bike. When you hear your shout out, you know it's all right. Put on your magic pants and let's go. We're cruising into the power zone. Clip in, set yourself free. Come on and take a ride with me. You know what you need to know and what's it all about. Everything you need, it's on the clip out. Welcome to the Clip Out Podcast, episode 303. This is Crystal O'Keefe. And this is Tom O'Keefe. Hello. Hi. So, uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, we're This is our first one back from vacation. Yeah, I think okay. so. <laughs> Wait, is that right? Yeah, we recorded yeah, we got last back week. Friday. Yes, yeah, and then yeah, I yeah. had, I immediately, our, our plane landed at midnight and I had to be at work at eight o'clock. Yeah. And I had to work until... 11 o'clock p.m. So that's eight, brutal. You're still was, trying to catch up. You've been napping all week. I have. I'm like so jealous. But then at the same time, I wouldn't have wanted to work like 15 hours the second we landed. So. Yeah, mm. I might. I, I might actually nap during this podcast. OK, so watch out <laughs> if you hear some snoring. That's just Tom napping. It's just me taking a little. <laughs> there it goes. Oh, we had instructors in the news. How far do how long was I asleep? <laughs> Keep pedaling. We're not there yet. Tom. Oh, we're not there yet. No, okay, not yet. Okay, we're still in the opening. Okay. Oh man, <laughs> thought we were done. Okay, but uh, but we had a great time. And oh, we did. I almost oh my broke gosh. my foot. <laughs> and yeah, you did. It's so black and blue. I it mean, it's is. better now. But. Yeah. We need to stop with the injuries in this household. Well, my injury was nothing compared to you. I was like, look at my bruised foot, and you're just like. Go F yourself. I was like, hold my beer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I still have a freaking bruise. I still have a bruise on my foot, but I, but you Seven spotted me. Seven weeks and three days you, right there in the gave, making. <laughs> you gave me a six week head start, but I still have a bruise on my foot. But uh, I was, we were on a catamaran. This is, uh, you can officially file this under first world problems. Yeah, you can. That, just to be clear. But uh, I was trying to go into the ocean and that last little deck part, it gets slippery, <laughs> I now know. <laughs> well, they did tell us that they did tell us million that. times. But it was like my foot hit it. I didn't even have a second. It was just like whoosh. whoosh. And I had I had went off on the other side of the boat and, and you it were was fine. fine. And so I was getting I was getting off on the other side and was fine. It's not like I was running, because I think we all know You're not running. I'm not gonna do any running. No. And and I just set my foot down and went poof and went tits up and then my foot like got wedged under the little metal bar or something because it's really the ladder that okay <laughs> okay and uh because it was really black and blue and i landed on my back but my back was fine luckily because i had one of those uh life vests on so. thank goodness yeah i um i'm pretty sure i'm the worst wife ever because i was off in the water i was already snorkeling i yeah. was like as soon as the boat docked i was like i'm out you're like oh that's a shame for you <laughs> i had no idea this occurred yeah like none until the next day <laughs> that's not true <laughs> and then the people from the boat were like how many have you had and i'm like i hadn't had any <laughs> like zero i had, had zero i had had coke. i had had like eight <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had Coke Zero, but I I was like, I swear to God, I'm not drunk. I'm fine. I didn't hit my head. And then there's no concussions. Don't ruin everyone else's trip. Thank I, God. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm not. Last thing up. we need is two concussed people in this oh, house. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that would be a recipe for disaster mm -hmm. and forgetfulness. Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. What now? So, uh, but I, I have big news. I oh. have big news uh, regarding my injury. If you're done with yours, yes. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to take anything away. I guess I went to the physical therapist this week on Tuesday, and I was asking like, how much longer do you guys think I'm going to do this? And they were like, you know what? I think that you're doing really good, and you can not released, but you can have off for two weeks so they told me to get back to all my normal activities try it all out for a couple weeks and then come back and and see how how everything's doing i think i might get released in two weeks like Ooh. i think that might be it um but i feel really good i've been running uh and i didn't 
like feel like I was going to die at the end of my runs. Not and feeling like dying is is a net positive. Yeah, uh, it is. And and uh, I can also tell from the data I have, like my whoop recoveries are better. I'm sleeping better. My stress levels are showing that everything is down. Like you can just see things are really starting to to come together data wise. And, and it, it corresponds She's, with how I feel. You've been calling me by the right name again. Yeah, I've got yeah. that down. I'm like, uh, oh, it's Tom. Okay, yes. got it. Uh, and and I know the kids' names too. Like it's it's really all just come. It was never that bad. <laughs> it was never that bad. But even even the words I was forgetting, I feel you like that's better. Wouldn't be my better. first wife who has forgotten me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I really think that that one guy that she dated, she tried to she tried to make it as easy on herself yes, as possible. Yes, it was just a one letter difference. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but as I was saying, I feel like um, I feel like it's finally all getting better. Back to normal and it just feels amazing to be able to to say that like it's just seven weeks like it's been a lot and I know it's not very long in the whole grand scheme of things I realize yeah. that uh, but it's it's like when you're out of work right when you're when you're out of work for six weeks when you get to the end of it you're like oh it was only six weeks but you spend that six weeks wondering when you're gonna be done yeah there were some dark yeah. days in there I'm like yeah. is this ever gonna get better am I just always gonna have this super high heart rate whenever I try to run am I always gonna feel like dog do every time I try to run or get my heart rate up like it was terrible I've been trying to wear uh, the my hoodies that are less sexy yeah in order to help you keep your heart rate down I appreciate so, that you always just you're so thoughtful Tom. I'm a giver I know that's what I am that's <laughs> people say that all the time to me they say Tom you're a giver <laughs> you are a giver and so <laughs> that's that's the sacrifice I make in order to help you thank you so um where, what are we doing this week? So this week uh, on the timeline we should talk about yeah. is 2016. Boy, things are heating up. I don't know if you guys are are, are into this timeline. I'm super into it. Uh, for those of you who haven't gotten a chance, like you're not one of our Patreon members, you haven't heard any of these like deep dives we're doing. Do yourself a favor and go out to 2016. There's so much that starts to happen. Yeah, it really uh, ramps it, up. It does. This is like a big, big year. And you can really see the evolution of the company. It's just fascinating to see things that happened back then that they are restarting now. It's like uber fascinating that, you know, like for I'll just give you a little, little tidbit. We once upon a time at Peloton back in 2013 had a Spanish speaking instructor. Yeah. That was a thing. And then it didn't happen again until 2020, maybe 2021. I don't know, but you get the point. Right. Like it took a long time. So there's just little things like that that are just fascinating to dig through. I am loving it. Um, so if you haven't gotten a chance, come on over to uh, Patreon, check out those bonus episodes, or at least go to the website and check out the timeline. Yeah, it's really I, cool. Yeah, if you want to hear us talk about it, that's a Patreon episode. But if you want to look at the timeline, you can do that it's, for it's free. all laid out in a graphic on our website. If you go to the clubhouse.com slash Peloton timeline, uh, you can see it all there. You can start at 2012 yeah. and work your way through again. We're up to 2016. Yeah. And we will eventually get all the way up to the present day just every week. And and. If you join Patreon, you those are all waiting there for you. It's not like they last a week and then self destruct. So yeah. you can you can play catch up. So all sorts of bonus content for you. So, Definitely. And what pray tell do you have in store for people this week on the show proper? We're gonna talk about how you can be in a Peloton ad. Ooh. Uh, and we're gonna talk about new apparel launches that might surprise you not to mention new uh all kinds of information that's coming out there's a lot of um there's a lot of people that are reviewing the bike and mm -hmm. they're reviewing the tread and there's some interesting comparisons particularly the row being compared to the hydro so we're going to get into that We've got a new lawsuit to hit uh oh, fun. i know yeah. right uh and then we've got a new dr jen she's visiting and we're gonna oh, talk i like the old dr jen why did we replace her we did not she replace was doing her. so well too. I, I know i really thought she was gonna make it this and... is a new topic babe it's okay oh, she's staying okay. we're just gonna have a new topic Okay, it's that okay. Makes, I you, can't, you couldn't replace Dr. Jen if you wanted to. I was like, I, I mean, don't she remember. Is one of a kind. <laughs> I don't remember recording with a new Dr. Jen, but with all the concussedness. <laughs> You didn't have a concussion, remember? So you tell me. Oh, my God. But maybe I don't remember the concussion ladies, because of the concussion. Did ladies, you ever think of that? Ladies, this is like the man flow. You know what I'm saying. 
I, I had this major thing happen, <laughs> and he's complaining about his little fall on a boat. I'm just saying he it had was, one bruise. I'm and just, this, and now he's comparing his concussion. I'm just saying <laughs> it was worth worse than childbirth. <laughs> No, my foot was dilated to 14 centimeters. It was not. <laughs> it wasn't even it wasn't even swollen 14 <laughs> centimeters. You just hush it, Tom. So anyway, Dr. I don't Jen, like you measuring any part of my body in centimeters. <laughs> well, don't bring it up. <laughs> OK, Dr. Jen, which she, makes me think, do you think <laughs> in, oh our UK listeners, if you could answer this for me? Oh, dear. In the UK. Do you call Miles Teller Kilometer Teller? No, his name is Miles. Well, in America. <laughs> but we don't use the metric system. It's still a name. Okay. Just ask. It's a fair question. End of the school year is coming up. And uh, Dr. Jen's going to talk to us about how to keep balance through that time period. If you have kids, you know, it can get incredibly insane. Speaking of going back to work, Jess King is back to work. We're going to talk about that. What's going on with all the instructors. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, Angelo is going to drop in. And we're going to talk about adding fuel for marathon training without adding weight. Uh, not as easy as it as it sounds. And of course, all the other things that we talk about birthdays and such oh, oh wow i took a nap sorry so so, so let me get my ruler <laughs> gonna fall asleep when i'm talking oh i thought you were gonna measure in centimeters mm, i am <laughs> gonna measure things on your body oh so if you're goodness. gonna sleep if you're gonna sleep if i'm putting you to sleep Tom, i went to catholic school i was like is she gonna hit me with that ruler you might as well just put it in a review and hit send jeez <laughs> I told you I'd be napping throughout the show. <laughs> it was a callback. Shameless plugs. Don't forget we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you can find podcasts. You can find us while you're there. Be sure and leave us a review, but not in centimeters. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> you can also find us. As long us. as it's five centimeters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. You set the bar very low. <laughs> like five stars. No wonder you were so happy when we started dating. Oh. So... <laughs> Uh, where was I at? Oh, Facebook. <laughs> Facebook.com slash the clip out. While you're there, like the page, join the group. You can also uh, find us on Patreon, the aforementioned Patreon uh, at patreon.com slash the clip out, where you can get all sorts of bonus content. You can get ad free episodes. And when they come out early, we send them to you early. So sometimes you get them, you know, 18, 20 hours early if that's uh, important to you. And don't forget, all of these are on YouTube. Uh, you can see Crystal in HD, and you can see me in regular SD because my fancy camera broke, and it I'm went. just using the shitty one that's on my laptop. So, Were you wearing it when you were on the boat? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was live streaming with my laptop on the boat. That's why I fell. So uh, is that everything? Oh, we have a newsletter. You can sign up for it at theclipout.com. Same place you can look at the timeline while you're there, which you should do. Because she worked hard on it, I did nothing. So, <laughs> there's all that. Let's uh, let's dig in, shall we? We shall. Hey, you know what I was just thinking before we dig in? Oh, okay. Just a reminder that um, Big Sur's coming up April 30th, mm -hmm. and that means we're going to be in, in San Jose for our big meetup. That is true. Details about where it's going to occur are going to be coming very soon. San uh, Jose, where it's going to, we're going to, it's the actual said? like oh, meetup. Okay. Uh, so we we have been sent several options, and now Tom needs to vote. I need Tom's input, and it's it's. I a, vote for the one with chicken tenders. They all have them. Oh. That's why you need to. Look, and we can't go wrong. I I know you're going to be happy with then the choices. We're be doing three meetups. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be doing the 21 miles. You can meet up wherever after that. <laughs> See, I'm I'm the man of the people. You're too good to do three meetups. She's like, I'm Clip by Crystals. One meetup. That's oh all you my get. God. One meetup per trip. Where I'm like, I'll do all the meetups. Uh, I, like you're I'm the lead singer. I'm the I'm bass gonna player. I'm going to be walking 21 miles. I have to get up at like 3 a.m. I'm the bass player. I'm just happy to be here. You're not going to get up at 3 a.m. You're going to be sleeping. Oh, hell yeah. 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 So, shh. Why would I get up at 3 a.m.? <sighs> hey, speaking of, who's our interview? We didn't talk about that. We didn't talk about our interview. No. It's Tammy Cunnington oh, is our interview. Yeah. So, um, for those of you who don't know that name, just right off the top of your head, uh, she's an amazing 
uh, para, um, para, Paralympic. Paralympic. Paralympian. Paralympian. There we go. And um, she was recently in the studio, the very first Paralympian in the studio, very first athlete that had her own adaptive bike, yeah. training bike. And we in talked the studio. to her. Like, what, a year and a half, two years ago? Yeah, she was on the show a while back. I mean, because she's just an amazing lady. Yeah. So, so we talked to her about, she was getting, at the time, she was gearing up for Tokyo, which then the pandemic happened. Right. Like it ended up, but we catch up with her during right. this interview, so we get to hear all about that as well. And she talks all about what went into bringing her bike in the studio and all that. So. Yeah. So, okay, there's all that. <laughs> we are now done. Let's dig in. We shall. <laughs> we shall again. Peloton in the news. If you want to be a big, famous Peloton celebrity, here's your chance. You can cast for Peloton. I love this. This is age of 16 and up, too. Yeah. So they are uh, looking for all body types. This, they say that. Yeah. Dan Bell casting. They're, they're casting a spot when they want regular Peloton users in it. This is interesting to me. Bike, tread, row, and guide, and Peloton app. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Very. That's very, very interesting. Isn't it? I keep waiting for it to say four Ben Franks, Ben Frank types. Come on down. So so act fast because auditions are between 324. So it's already March 29th. Already started. Started. And it goes through four six. But the shoots are going to occur. Let's see. April 13th through April 17th. um, One of those two weeks. And so they don't know. They don't know where they're shooting yet. Yeah. Depends on where you live. So that is uh, fascinating. Can't wait to see what comes out of this. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that will be interesting to see, especially since they're looking for real Peloton users, which is fascinating because people have been saying this forever. Four years. Like, I, why aren't you spotlighting regular people in your commercials? So going back through the timeline has mm-hmm. been fascinating for so many reasons. And and just little things like this is one of them. Because if you look back, Peloton started by just like any other company. They were like, hey, buy our product. Then people started getting really excited about it. It was the people who started Home Rider Invasion, which eventually became Homecoming. Then... If you look back over the marketing, you can clearly see this like switch where Peloton started leaning into the members. It's more than a bike. It became a whole thing. Yeah. And then it switches again because around that time what we had uh, Dara that she came in and she was like, forget the membership. Let's focus on the famous people. And now... Dara's gone. We've got a whole new, clearly something new is coming. Yeah. I don't know what that's going to look like, but it's just fascinating to see this evolution of a company. Absolutely. It's it when you zoom out like that, mm-hmm. which is what the timeline's great for, yeah. which is why you should go check it out. <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, it'll be interesting to see when this, uh, when this commercial comes out. It will. So Peloton has launched Peloton Essentials. Yeah. Is it just like <laughs> underwear and socks? No. It's not. It's uh, it's things that you might always want. So like um, they're they're always going to be there. So you see the shirt that Jen Sherman is wearing here. Yes. Um, I can't think of the name of it. This is brain stuff I still happening. It's called a shirt. No, it's like a pullover. It's like a specific kind a pullover of pullover shirt. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> It, but it, the the point of these is that they're classic. They're going to be in dark, simple colors. This one is in all the things that are currently out there are all black. Uh, so there's going to be leggings. There's going to be um, shirts. There's going to be, um, and they're for men and for women, right. by the way. And then these things will always be there, regardless of what else is selling currently. So you don't have to worry about these selling out. It's not a it's not a race. Exactly. It's not like getting. Taylor Swift tickets. Right. It's the, these will always be there because they are essential. Not unlike us. <laughs> That's why we're always here. Yes. Rocking it since 2017. That's why we, we don't sell out. <laughs> um, yeah. So I thought this was really uh, interesting because, again, just talking through that evolution, it's been interesting to see how the, it's occurred for the apparel as well. And they used to have some styles a long time ago. Clearly, we're going back to that again. And I, I think that's smart. I do think that that needs to happen. Agreed. And they're I, nice, refreshed, up, updated looks yeah. as well. So we were talking about all the different reviews we've seen out there this week for different things in the peloton world pc mag 
has one kind of wanting people to try yoga conditioning classes. Yeah, and this is this is just surprising to me because PC Mag does not usually you know, drill down to this level on a specific kind of exercise. Right. Um, which is why I thought it was interesting. By the way, I agree. Uh, these yoga conditioning classes are really cool. They're, they're nice and slow. So anybody can do them regardless of what your uh, expertise level is with yoga. But you're holding the positions longer. This this article goes into a deep dive about why they love it. But suffice it to say, it's because you're getting a little bit of strength training and some burn along with all of the wonderful um, things that you get from every yoga class. So I think they're really cool. And I think it's really nice that this was this feels like this is more of an organic placement than some of these tend to be. You don't think that they're out pushing these? Oh, I'm not saying they're not. This one Let just me has be di- clear. Yeah. This one just feels like I said, PC Mag is not known for digging that deep on a kind of exercise. Yeah. I mean, I would think that they're talking about computers, not a thing you can do on your computer. Or even if they were like, oh, this bike is amazing. Great. But they're not going to be like, but let me tell you about Hidden Hills. Right. You, that's that's for what sure. I mean. Yeah. And that's why I found it interesting. And that's why it felt I don't know that it is, but it just felt more organic than some of these feel. So the Peloton Studios account had a fun post this week. I love it. It was National Puppy Day (laughs) and uh, and they posted the puppies and then you get to guess which puppy belongs to which instructor. Yeah, and some of these I totally know because I see their accounts all the time. Some of and some these of puppies these... we've met. Yes, <laughs> you recognize Hattie. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, and some of them I'm like I don't know that one, uh, but some of them are super easy and it's great, and I love all of them. And it's really I think it's interesting because not many of our instructors have cats. I just find that fascinating. Okay. There are a lot of dogs. Yeah. Well, it's funny that you say that. I was about to make fun of you, but I I did a version of what you just did. Why are you giving me a face? Because you're about to make fun of me. And I said I, I, I was, was about ready. to. It was conjugated in the past tense. But <laughs> I was watch. I was like clicking through, looking at the puppies, and I was like, oh, "That's interesting that there are no cats." And then I was like, "Well, it's National Puppy Day, time. right? Like, they of right. course, even if they have cats, they're not going to post them." Because and and that is true. That is absolutely true. But there are there are a lot of instructors that have dogs, and there's right. there's only a couple couple instructors that have cats um i think which like is, five which maybe. is interesting in that they all live in well they don't all but all of the american instructors live in new york yeah which is it's easier small apartments to have a cat it's a lot of work you got to take a dog for a walk you would think you'd see more cats just because it's easier now on the flip side and a lot of people don't don't think about it from this perspective cats are evil <laughs> and so well i was gonna say a lot of our instructors are instructors they're active people naturally they don't true. mind walking a dog they're, they're not you <laughs> that's fair <laughs> I think it like maybe they're like the Jetsons and they've got a little treadmill for their dog. <laughs> Treadmills on a dog is not safe. Stop don't do this that. Crazy thing. Don't do that. Don't do that. I don't need another freaking. Uh, I don't. We don't need another tread recall. Don't nope. put your dog on a treadmill, please. <laughs> don't give these people any bad ideas, Tom. Oh, that's my superpower. I know. Peloton has bike and bike plus on sale yet again. Yeah. uh, Lots of people are talking about this one, though, because uh, this is a this is not just like on Woot. This is like on sale. Right. And it's kind of seen as a spring sale, which not that Peloton has never had one of these, but it's not a given that it's going to occur every year. Uh, um, When they did used to have them, it used to be around like. Mother's Day, uh, that kind of thing. And so I just find it interesting, the timing of it. Mm -hmm. Um, But I also just in general think that it's a good thing. Um, One other interesting note about it is don't forget that we're still on that import ban. And uh, they must just have billions of things in inventory, (laughs) like just the mind boggling amounts because they're still putting stuff on sale. Yeah, (laughs) We got this. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So just fascinating. So we mentioned earlier about uh, seeing lots of reviews pop up again. Uh, Sports Illustrated has uh, a review of the Bike Plus asking, do the upgrades warrant the price? Yes. 
<laughs> okay. I didn't That's realize like, you worked for Sports Illustrated. I don't. I don't need I just, to. I mean, I just I, know that they do. I figured you were more of a Sports Illustrated swimsuit kind of gal. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I, this is again interesting that they are calling out specifically the Bike Plus. Right. Um, but overall, there was nothing like super that stood out about this article, mm-hmm. uh, that stood out about this review. It's just interesting so many of them are occurring at the same time. Yeah. So. And did we get to focus on this at all? Did they did they land on a yes? Um, oh, here we go. Final thoughts. It's a premium studio bike that provides a spin class or outside ride experience. Um, it's a good option if you love Peloton workouts and integrated programming. If you want to try classes without committing, you can get it for the Peloton app for about $13 a month. Uh, there's the option to rent. Overall, an integrated sync workout with Bike Plus can rival spin classes with options to explore locations around the world. It's not an investment to make lightly, but there's potential to revolutionize the way you work out. That is a non-answer. Right. Answer. They, they didn't really answer. Mm-mm. But Sports Illustrated is running for Senate. <laughs> In case. They don't want to make anybody mad. Yes. <laughs> like it could. It could be worth it. My not. Well, thanks for asking the question, Sports Might. Illustrated. And while we're speaking of Sports Illustrating, not answering questions, they also have a Peloton tread versus the Nordic Track 2023, in which they say maybe. Did, did they? Did you no, read this one? I, this is really long. This one, uh, this one came up lo- pretty late in the day, so I didn't read this one at all. Okay, here we go. So the final thoughts, Jerry Springer's final thoughts. They say, hey, Peloton users, let's be kind to each other out there. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. the important thing. So sure, this might seem like a battle between the shiny new thing and the tried and true, but Peloton is not a fad and any modern day Nordic track ain't your grandma's treadmill. Both machines are fun, functional, and technologically advanced. They are, of, There are, of course, key differences that might sway you one way or the other. For some, the allure of studio classes and Peloton community will be great for motivation. For others, the reliability but responsiveness of the runner-friendly features will guide you toward the Nordic track in the end, maybe. So, man. Sports Illustr- Illustrated. Pick a side. Yeah, yeah like, have some thoughts and opinions please. i know i just expect them to, it's like uh at least they laid it out yeah and they laid it out thoughtfully I mean, there, there was a lot of there's information a lot of detail there. there for you to digest if you're trying to make that choice but it's it's just they won't land on anything because they probably both advertise with them <laughs> that's that's what i think yeah. too <laughs> and finally live science is uh comparing hydro and the peloton row and they also kind of sort of give an answer i think they give a a better answer than than sports illustrated does they say that basically the hydro is better if you want a true rowing experience like if you're like i love rowing and i want to do me some rowing and everything else can suck it then you you probably want the hydro row but if or the hydro but if you if you want to have more like different class types and have it be maybe a little bit more engaging that you're better off to go with the Peloton. Which it, honestly, that matches what we've heard from people who are rowers yeah. like, that went to the early row, um, the regatta thing. And mm-hmm. they talked about it then the, the same but, type of thing. Like if you, if you love rowing, the Peloton row takes some getting used to, cause it doesn't feel like real rower. Yeah. Um, but it's going to have more bells and whistles and class types and things like that. So if that's important to you, and if you already have a Peloton membership, it's kind of a no-brainer. It's gonna, yeah, it's going to be cheaper for you in the long run. So unless they end up putting stuff out there on the app, we'll see. Yeah, but I just mean if you're already in the Peloton ecosystem. Well, there's people that would say a a, a Peloton row costs significantly more than a hydro, so it wouldn't necessarily in the oh, long run. Gotcha. That's that's what I was getting at. But it would be a giant pain in the ass. Yeah, for sure. Who's suing Peloton now? So we had a listener point this out to us via our tip line. Yes, and you can do that too. You just go to TCO in the know at gmail.com or you can go over to our website where it says submit a tip and you can send a tip there as well. But uh, this came from pink, hashtag pink underscore pineapple, Jack's Ash. Shh, that was not a s. <laughs> 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 she 
She goes, I send you a tip, and then you call me a name. <laughs> Never send you a tip again. <laughs> so you. So uh, we, yeah. So we, we. She had this, I guess, served up to her as an ad on Facebook. Yeah. And uh, so I went and found the website, and it's is Peloton violating users' privacy data by publicly sharing fitness data. Yeah. So 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 supposedly people are thinking that Peloton is sharing fitness performance data, including the classes they take and workouts they do without obtaining proper consent. It's possible that this data sharing may violate a federal privacy law and attorneys are gathering Peloton members to take action. So right now, this is not a lawsuit. They're just looking for people to to get information. And um, I don't know. I'd like to believe Peloton's done their due diligence and that's not a thing that's happening. But you would think, I would think, I, but it's really it's kind of vague and what they're really saying is going on because like it's it's like you know how they they get all the information and then they put things out there like I'm making this up I'm not saying this is going to be what they would use but like the cool down and it like aggregates it and it puts it out yeah. there and sends an email well because that information is out there maybe that's going to people who it shouldn't be going to like I think that's what they're trying to somehow yeah. say that's not a good example I'm just I just yeah that, boy, I mean I, I don't know anything about. I don't either. HIPAA, but it just seems like <laughs> this isn't HIPAA. Though. I know, but like, but yeah, it just seems like whether like, hey, this person worked out. I know a what, lot. That doesn't what? seem like they violated your privacy. Yeah, but, I I agree. We will see what happens. So, that's dumb, but it's out there. Oh, now we're gonna get a class action lawsuit because I called them dumb. <laughs> I because I call a lot of people dumb. <laughs> so there's a lot of people that could join that class action lawsuit. Well, you and know the what? The problem is they're dumb enough to do it. Don't be dumb. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> They're allegedly dumb. I no, think that, they're not, though. They're so... Oh, <laughs> damn it. I just... I was trying to help you I out, I just Tom. can't stop digging. Oh, man. Getting the psychological edge with Dr. Jen. Joining us once again via the magic of Zoom Tube is Dr. Jen Mann, licensed marriage, family, and child therapist, and sports psychology consultant. She also has a wonderful app called No More Diets, which you should check out. It's Dr. Jen. Hello. Hi. Hello. We have a question from Sarah Lester, and uh, I think most parents can uh, relate to this. It's it, the end of the year is quickly approaching with school year. And I mean, the, the end of the school year. And uh, she's already stressing about how tough it's going to be to balance her training with all of the end of the school years, things that happen. And I also would have just like to add, and we have one graduating so i'm making it about me again so it's gonna be <laughs> like it's gonna be insanity yeah. around here <laughs> totally does this person uh, also have a brain a traumatic brain injury <laughs> is, is this a real person she hit by a car by any <laughs> no no and this was sarah lester her name was her name is sarah lester <laughs> yeah. yep yep that's it you got me yeah <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, here's what I recommend. You want to map out all the information that you have as early on as possible. And like whether you use a like computer program for your schedule or like do it by hand, someplace that you can visually map out the week, the month, and then obviously like day by day. And what you want to do is make sure that you have all the information of what time slots are blocked out. And then you can really look at where can I realistically fit in my workout? And also you have to be flexible. That like one of the things now that I work from home and I see all my clients virtually, there are times where I go into the gym after I've taken my kids to school and I do my cardio. And then I see some clients and then I hop back in because I've had a cancellation or I've got a, a, an hour in between. And then I do my my strength class and my stretching, hopefully. <laughs> and, you know, so you kind of have to be creative. And what you may need to do at times is kind of do your workout in chunks and be creative. Now, also keep in mind, if you have a long day and you go to a graduation, then you come home and you're like, okay, now I have to do the other half of my workout. Be strategic about what you're gonna do at the end. If you're doing your cardio right before you go to sleep, you're probably not gonna sleep well. 
you want a bit of a, a of a gap but if you do your stretching or your yoga before sleep that's something that actually might help you sleep and really help you kind of digest your day so really kind of plan it out be flexible be willing to kind of do it in bites and also be forgiving of yourself there may be a day here and there where it's not realistic to work out where it's not good self-care. There may be other times where it's good self-care to wake up because you know it's going to be such a stressful day and get your workout over with. But keep in mind, you also need your sleep. Mm. You're so wise. Start so doing wise. before bed yoga. I know. Actually, I was just, yeah, that's, it's again, making it about me. But I was just thinking I worked last night because Tom was at a movie and I worked yeah. except like for a long, like I worked until like 930. I do wonder if that kind of, Got my brain all crazy. Not worked out, but it worked. And our so. bedtime ritual screwed up because the movie was so long. I mm-hmm. saw John Wick 4 and it's three hours long for no damn reason. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> See, you always make me think of really good things. So maybe I do need to be more careful with my bedtime routine. Sorry. Yeah, for sure. And and look, I, I think, look, I swear by Ross Raber and sleep meditation. You know how I feel about that. <laughs> I like, I've been met with resistance in my hand. One of my daughters who is a night owl like me, she's like, I'm not doing meditations i'm like well one i'm doing one can i hang with you and then next thing you know she's falling asleep (laughs) (laughs) teenagers Uh, I love that. Well, hopefully that was helpful for Sarah. Yes. Sarah Lester, <laughs> not me. A real honest to God person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you. So thank you so much for all that. Until next time, where can people find you? You can find me at Dr. Jen Man on all social media, two ends on Jen, two ends on man. And I post my workouts, all chunks of it, <laughs> each day of it, as best as I can on my Insta stories. Instructors in the news. Jess King is back at work. She sure is. She uh, she came back this week, teaching classes and and posting reels. She's back. It's official. It's happening. That outfit she's laying out looks like something you would wear. It totally does. Uh, I don't have that hoodie, but I do have a different uh, hoodie. But you do have six hoodies that look like it. Similar. Yeah. <laughs> the rainbow tie dye. Yeah, I do. You that, go for that obviously, a lot. that was a pride collection um, from a couple years ago. But all of those are past uh, things. I don't have the uh, leggings. Sorry, but I do have something <laughs> similar. I do have it. I do have that t-shirt. Do you have that bra? <laughs> yeah. You don't have that baby. I do not have that baby. No. Mm-mm. That would be scary. That would be kidnapping. It would. Don't, I, would don't, I would not steal Just King's baby. Don't, well, don't steal anybody's I'm baby. I'm not stealing honey. any babies. I don't think you should like <laughs> limit it to just Just King. I don't think you should be taking anybody's. I'm baby. not taking any babies. I'm just a little bit worried. That seemed like a hyper specific pledge. Because you said that baby. <laughs> That's like if if someone's like, I will not cheat on you in Atlanta. <laughs> but you're going to. Des Moines, <laughs> Atlanta, and Los Angeles. No adultery of any kind. There will be no baby stealing of any kind in any state or location. Okay. Or country. Just making ever. sure. <laughs> Duly noted. Okay. Emma Lovewell has her official book launch coming up on May 1st. She does. And it's it's going to be at the town hall. And if you don't know that, because I didn't, someone had to explain that to me. Okay. It is a, the town hall is a location, like it's a venue okay. in New York City. Okay. It's going to be moderated by Cody Rigsby. I guess uh, Cody has become the moderator for everything. Oh. He's, because he did Pink's thing and yeah. now he's doing this. He's getting speaking gigs everywhere. I wonder if she will then moderate his book launch. I don't know. Won't that be interesting? It will be. Yeah. While we're speaking of Emma Lovewell, she sat down with SheKnows.com and talks about how she became an instructor. And it sounds like she took a page out of the Jen Sherman playbook. Yeah, it does. Um, I think uh, she knew, if I remember correctly, she knew John and Jill for a really long time. Um, But I could be getting her mixed up with a different instructor. Anyway, uh, the article goes into detail about that, among other things, including her book launch. So this is something that you can dive into on your own uh, because it's kind of a long article. And while we're speaking of books... Yeah, I uh, wanted to point out that Ben Aldis's book has two different 
release dates. So in the UK, it's August 31st. In in the US, it's October 17th. Just wanted to clear that up and make it very clear in case there was anybody who was like, well, I thought you said October, but the UK has a different date. So Ah. you know why it comes out later in the US? Why? It's because they've got to go through one by one and erase all the use in words like humor and mm-hmm. color. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And they have to do that in each copy. Each copy hand. I by mean, hand. that takes yeah. a while. It does. Yeah. Speaking of books. <sighs> Is anybody pre- getting book fatigue? <laughs> I'm just going to pre-record that and drop it in. <laughs> Robin Arzan has officially announced her new book. Yep. Which is a book of journal prompts. Yep. Which is basically like, I got a new book. You know what? F*** it. You write it. (laughs) (laughs) I don't Uh, have time. You write the, it's just blank pages. You write a book. (laughs) Well, it's got my picture on it. You'll love it. She sees it a little differently. Okay. She sees it as uh, people have asked her a lot about her journey and how she got there. And uh, this journal will help people figure out what's holding them back, what it is they want, and how to get where they want to go through different journaling uh, prompts. And apparently there's like different sections that, you know, might speak to you at different times. So there's all kinds of opportunities to journal it all out and solve all of your problems. Basically, this journal can become your life coach. How about that? Yeah. And she spoke. uh, Robin. Robin (laughs) spoke. We're still talking about Robin. I know. I thought I used the wrong pronoun. No, I was uh, just being clear. Okay. She spoke at Columbia University. Yep. She was there and, and it, she was talking about, it was something like women in business. I don't remember the exact name of it, but it was something to that effect. And so she spoke about women in business and being an entrepreneur and things like that. So um, yeah. we're going to see a lot of these things. We're not going to go into it at length. Just yeah. wanted to let you know what happened. Everybody got an NFT. So Cliff Dwenger is now also a strength instructor yeah i love how i love how peloton is taking like all these different instructors that already exist and like adding to what they already do uh, i think it's also a win for all of us as users because it just adds more class types and more availability and i feel like the schedule is really picking up these days so i love it it's also a great way to get people to maybe sample other platforms right so true so true if like cliff is your jam over on the bike yeah. and you haven't really been into strength this is a great opportunity for you to go try strength and they're hoping that cliff is going to pull you in and they're probably right they've been traditionally right about these things but congrats to cliff yes maddie majacomo is going to be doing an in-store in canada yeah in toronto specifically which is and in canada we record on wednesdays he's actually doing that that appearance today and i i just You know, sometimes people talk about how these instructors like they don't record enough or they don't do enough. And I just wanted to point out that like he taught like two live classes today before he traveled to Toronto to be in store appearance. And I I don't know how they're setting up this in store appearance. But in the past, when they've done in store appearances, like it's a long day. Yeah, they they make it a thing because the instructors hang out with the people who work there. And then uh, when the people come in. The instructors are on the whole time and they they talk to everybody and they hang out with everybody. It's a it's a very big deal. So um, (laughs) I think just just wanted to point out that just because they're not recording doesn't mean they're not working. Ash Pryor uh, spoke to Forbes magazine. Yes. That's a big deal. Yeah, it is. Uh, And she talks about how she rode her way to the top of the fitness industry. I love seeing her uh, featured everywhere. Um, You know, she's one of our newest instructors and people just seem to love her. Um, It's been really, really good for her. Yeah. I uh, I just think rode her way to the top of the fitness industry. That really only works as a headline in print. Because when you say it, it makes her sound lazy. Ah, she just rode her way to the top. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because you haven't used a rower, Tom. No, but you know, I don't hear it as R O W. I hear it as R O A D. Oh, like oh you mean R O D E? Oh, R O D E. So like, <laughs> like, like rode a bike. Like she, yeah, she was just a ride, <laughs> just a ride to the top. That's so yeah. funny. Yeah, you're right. I never occurred to me that way. <laughs> Rad Lopez popped up on Pix11 News. I think this is is at least his second, maybe his third time. He, I, I think here's my prediction. I think Rad Lopez is dating somebody who works at Pix11 <laughs> News. That's going to be the next, the next uh, big Rumor. scoop. Is that like, oh, he's seen out in public with the anchor from Pix11 News. <laughs> 
well you know whatever works for us. no like more power to to the both of them but uh (laughs) but yeah so they he was on there talking about outdoor workouts that are perfect for spring i love that it's it's time i mean it's still 40 degrees here but uh i'm hoping it's time i'm believing and manifesting spring well sure it's i mean but it's almost april yeah exactly. any second now. any second well it'll go from 40 to 80 well yeah here that's, it will. that's what it'll do here yeah cody rigsby talked to fit and well and he says he's got three techniques to help you build mental strength so did you uh read no. these tips okay i did not okay well let's scroll down so we can give people just a tiny hint we'll just do one a little taste a little taste focus on your breath okay focus on your breath so kind of meditation awareness okay. type of thing. All right. All right. Start with shorter sessions. Definitely. I mean, Dr. Jen says that all the time. Yeah. And use mindfulness in your workout with mind muscle connection. Tonal really, really pushes that all the time. I love that. So there you go. Yep. There are your three tips. You're you do all, those things. You're going to have the strongest mind ever. You're all now mentally strong. You can, you're strong enough to be a supervillain. Go poison Gotham's water supply. Or don't. Well, what'd you get all the mental strength for if you're not going to poison gossip? Well, I thought they could do something good with it, but I mean, what else? Oh, goody two shoes over there. Speaking of Cody, he was asked to play Smash or Pass with Rishi. So he was asked to play it or somebody asked Rishi Smash or Pass about? No, somebody asked Cody Smash or Pass about Rishi Sunak, who is the prime minister of of Britain. He's uh, apparently... A big Peloton user. We've yes. discussed that in the past. Yeah. And Cody is his instructor of choice. I see. And did Cody smash or pass? He said smash. <laughs> well. And then the... Then the, <laughs> the uh, Talk about riding your way to the top. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and then the interviewer was like, well, you know, he's short. And I was like, well, that's... I'm offended. Were you, did you get a little hurt? Yeah. Oh. And Cody says that he likes a short king, so... All right. Apparently, I got a shot with Cody, but I. (laughs) Well, that would be weird. (laughs) I also thought it was a little heteronormative where she's like, he's short. It's like, okay, I know that like in in heterosexual relationships, typically speaking, women want the man to be taller than. Yeah. Right. And uh, I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just saying that's that's how it is. But as a a short guy, it's a common request. It's bad. But uh, (laughs) but it's common. Right. But like. In a in a gay relationship, like, well, you can't just only date people who are the exact same size as you. Somebody's gonna be shorter. Like, w- one of the two men in that relationship will be shorter than the other. Yeah. So, like, you can't use height in the same way in gay dating that you can in heterosexual dating, right? So it was just kind of a dumb thing to even point out. Like, it would be a deal breaker for him. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So I just thought it was. I feel like you spent a lot of time on this. I think you listened to too much Savage Love. (laughs) You got very defensive. I just thought it was a silly thing to say to a gay man. It is. That it's like, but that's, yeah. Like, don't you want the man to be taller than you? Well, if all the men have to be taller than you, then there will be no gay people because they'll just. You know what Cody would say? It's not that deep, boo. (laughs) (laughs) Well, he did say he didn't mind short guys. So there you go. All right. Olivia Amato was on the We Met at Acme podcast. Cool. And I guess this is a podcast that talks about uh, relationships. And I think it was like kind of like weird things that happen in relationships or failed relationships. So. Okay. So she talked about how she met her husband. I yes. assume. I gotcha. Yes. Cool. Katie Wong and Adrian Williams are, well, will have had an IG live by the time you Yours, yeah, right? it was it was. Yes. And uh, I watched it. It was all the things about rope boot camps. And they talked about like how they're structured, why they're structured the way they are. Uh, and they also for people who are wondering, yes, more 60 minute boot camps for rowing are coming. And also Katie thinks you're crazy for asking for them, but she will give them to you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was great. <laughs> uh, yeah, these two were adorable together. I love it. Bradley Rose celebrated two years with Peloton. Yeah. And if you keep an eye on that Peloton Studios account, you're going to see every time these instructors have like an anniversary, Mm -hmm. you're going to see like a 30 second kind of reel from them. In this case, you get to hear from Bradley how he got to Peloton in 30 seconds, which is a great story. So congrats to Bradley. 
Bex Gentry is doing an Instagram live with Nanit. Yeah, um, obviously this is some kind of collaboration. Sure. Just mentioning it because it's an IG live. It's a good opportunity that it was a good opportunity to listen to um, Bex talk about things that she wouldn't necessarily talk about in class because it's a different format. So I always love getting to know the instructors. This is a good place to do that. Coming up after this, we're going to talk to Angelo. He's going to have tips for you for how to add fuel for your marathon training without adding weight to yourself. Flip out. Joining us once again via the magic of ZoobTube is Angelo here to answer all of your fitness and nutrition questions. So, hi. Hi. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me back. Well, thank you for being here. Uh, Karen Smith is looking for some help. She needs to find the right balance between fueling her body for running, hello, half marathons, and not gaining weight. And she Full needs- marathons. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Tom's got the answer. Eat the same stuff, Karen. full marathon, you're good. <laughs> sure. Sure. Karen will love that. Yes. Also, she needs to keep her energy up. As the week gets goes on, she gets more and more tired. Help. I yep. have I have thoughts. I'm curious if my thoughts are the same as your thoughts, Angelo. This is the stuff that we deal with all the time. Um, so th- this is super common, and that really is the trick. And so it it doesn't do any good dancing around this this fundamental nutrition and performance fact. When you are pushing your body for greater performance, you are going to perform better and your body is going to require more nutrition. And it's not simply as easy as, well, as long as I eat the right things and good things, then somehow the calories don't end up equating out to. So there's that balance. And that's really one of the more tricky things that we do with our clients because it's different for each person. It's not just simply a matter of, oh, well, as long as everyone's getting height, weight divided by it's it really doesn't work that way. Some people have really high requirements that are just launched into the stratosphere once they start doing endurance training. And some people have moderate requirements that go up marginally, but just a little when they start doing uh, a gr- more aggressive or longer, longer runs. So a, a few thoughts on that topic. Believe it or not, training for a half marathon, we actually find it, it is uh, a great tool in weight management. However, for someone who's just starting this training for a full marathon or beyond, where they're regularly running for more than an hour, hour and a half on an average training day, that's where it, it's, it becomes more specific. I'm not going to say harder. In fact, you know, you, you have the calorie burn going on like Tom was alluding to. <laughs> but that's where those targets really become important because it's really easy to overdo it and then get in a situation where y- you are under fueled and now you have to end up eating three times as much to catch back up. So overarching theme, Karen, what you want to do is make sure you have a quality base meal plan. So with my, and I even have Ironman athletes who are, you know, qualifying for the, you know, the top of the world uh, competition when it comes to this stuff. And this is the exact recommendations I give to them. I make sure their base meal plan is consistent, appropriate, and meeting their needs for the average training days. Then what we use is intra-training fuel to manipulate what they need on the extra training days. And we might even influence a little bit their base meal plan, but basically my client's base meal plan on the weekends, which is usually when a lot of our our marathon runners are doing their longer run, is pretty similar to the weekdays. What's changing is we add in extras during their intra-training fuel, so that's your supplementation, and maybe we'll add in some extra recovery on those days. And what that does is it avoids, for those of us who are concerned with weight maintenance, overcompensating and throwing calories at it that aren't needed. Most people when training, we find, are under-fueling, not over-fueling. We'll just throw throw that out there. I'd like to see re- recommend Karen just as a not knowing your specific details, just a, a kind of a blanket recommendation. Uh, 
make sure you're getting at minimum breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner every day. Make sure those meals are balanced and you're not skimping on carbs. It doesn't mean you need to have 150 grams, 200 grams in one sitting, but make sure you're getting some carbs with each of those meals. Now, from my more advanced athletes, I'm going to see them eating minimum five times a day or even in some cases six or more in some cases. Once you have that, then look at your training fuel. And that's where your, you know, your tabs and your, your, um, you know, your sugar, there, there's all kinds of goos, there's tablets, there's um, powders you can put in your water. I'm not going to promote one brand over another. You're running, you're familiar with those. Make sure you're getting uh, adequate needs and, and use them generously, especially when you know that that run is going to be lasting over about 45 minutes to an hour for you. And that will really help. Don't be afraid of using that then and there. They can spare you from the next day having to double, triple consume to get on top of low blood sugar. So that would be my advice in those cases. Don't be afraid of carbs and have carbs early in your day if you're a runner because carbs you haven't yet eaten and calories you haven't yet eaten can't help you. So a lot of my clients that are battling that kind of target where if they don't get enough energy, now their their training is tanking may in fact be getting enough fuel to satisfy them, but they're not getting it when they need it. We look at their day and they're getting 60% of their calories in the back half of the day. And if we reverse that, if they get 60, 70% front half of the day, or as much as possible before training, post-training, maybe it was adequate, or maybe a small increase is adequate. So look at the timing, because that will play a big role into how much increase you need. Now, I'm going to throw one last thing at you, because I know I'm probably overloading. <laughs> I didn't dive into specific <clears throat> intra-training fuel. We'd need our We'd need a whole nother episode for that. But <laughs> for the meal plan itself, um, we'll actually adjust in six, five to six percent increase increments. Now that's what we do at MetPro where we're looking at all the variables and we're making fast reactions and changes and we may do several consecutive adjustments to get it just right. What I recommend for the average person is increase or decrease 10% in one shot and then reevaluate. And if it's not enough fuel or it's too much fuel, then you can adjust from there. But make 10% changes and don't be afraid to make them in succession if need be. That's a good starting point. If you are experiencing low blood sugar or that feeling of complete exhaustion because you're overtrained and you don't have enough recovery, don't try and piecemeal it. Don't say, okay, well, I'm just going to eat, you know, another two ounces of chicken breast with my next meal and think that's going to fix it. You need to get on top of that add a solid minimum, minimum 25, 30 grams of carbs, you may need more than that. Add a little extra protein along with that. That's a minimum. In some cases, I need to throw 50, 60 grams in one shot at someone who's feeling like, oh man, I don't have the energy, plus calories on top of that. Get on the other side of that blood sugar crash. Then you, once you're stable, you can start playing with 10% movements up and down. Very good well, advice. Awesome. Well, thank <laughs> thank you very much for all that. Um, if people would like this sort of information tailor made for them, where can they find you? They can come to metpro.co slash TCO. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Peloton Artist Collaborations. We have a new artist series, this time featuring Shania Twain, your favorite. Look, I know I'm in the minority, but I cannot stand <laughs> Shania Twain. Like, like I don't just like could take it or leave it. I dislike her with a, like her music, white hot blaze of the sun. Yeah. Yeah. Her music, her music. Let me be. Yeah. Clear. I like I, there's something about her music that's always kind of 
gotten on my nerves too and it was funny because when she was a host on american idol i was just like i was back when i still watched it and i was just like oh and then she was on there and i was like oh well, she was great isn't it funny because i do think it's like there's something about how she sings that irritates me because yeah. like i don't have a problem with her as a person clearly yeah. i don't know her yeah um but it's just like there's just some people you hear a certain tone or you hear a certain sound and it like just like nails on a chalkboard yeah, and it's that's how it is for me with yeah. Shania Twain. But I know tons of people are excited about this. And for sure. I mean, she's huge. Like, you can't. That's you undeniable. You cannot deny that. Uh, and she, how appropriate that, you know, Women's History Month and she's yeah. got a new album out. So I'm super happy that these do not have to be for me. That's the beauty of them. Yes. They are for everybody. And uh, there's tons of classes. Uh, I did take a class Earlier in the week, I did a run with Logan Aldridge, and he had two Shania songs in it, and he said that in the end of the month, he was doing this artist series. So he was super excited he's going to be doing the strength class, but you have multiple options to be taking artist series classes. So if Shania Twain is your thing, you are going to have to be able to take all of the classes with all of the songs. In case you missed it. So Mariana had a post uh, about yoga conditioning. Mm-hmm. Well, she didn't have a post. Like, it was a Facebook Live. Like, Oh, I, is that what this is? <laughs> I don't know. You literally have on the thing. I, I wrote Mariana Fernandez Facebook Live. <laughs> the look on your face. Oh, like, okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Uh, Can I so, just take a nap during this portion? Sure. Uh, I, was, <laughs> I was told I could nap because I've, I've, I've worked so much. Mariana's uh, Mariachis, which is Mariana's fan group over on Facebook. They had a Facebook Live and there were several instructors that came from the yoga side of things and they talked about yoga conditioning. So if you've been interested in the yoga conditioning, you want to learn more about it and you didn't get to see this, go back because it's over in uh, the Facebook Live. It's saved over on Mariana's Mariachis and you can learn more about it. Um, <laughs> which is more than I can say. <laughs> yeah. Tom knows there's a post. Yes. It occurred. It was a thing. Well, the way this works is I say, hey, here's a thing. And then you do the talking. <laughs> and then if you say something that sounds like I could make it sound dirty, I start talking. About it. <laughs> You're it's, not supposed to tell them the formula. It's been five years. You don't know the rhythm by now. I do. I do. I just thought when it said there was a Facebook Live, you would say that, not she did a post. <laughs> Facebook Lives are technically posted. Oh, my God. <laughs> and Peloton Studios had uh, their weekly This Week at Peloton post. Yeah. So a couple of things I just wanted to point out. Um, we, we all know that there is the ride and run to greatness that is occurring. So the tread is happening this week. But uh, a couple things that I wanted to make sure people did know, Pump Up the Volume is a new program that is exclusive to the guide that's coming out this week. Uh, in seven weeks, it'll hit everywhere else. So don't freak out, people. It's coming. Also, uh, the Peloton is going to be celebrating Trans Day of Visibility on Friday, March 31st. That's the day that this comes out. Uh, so make sure that you are able to take those classes. Maddie Majacomo, uh, Jocelyn thompson Roll, and Jeffrey McEachran are all doing classes. Uh, for that day uh, so just wanted to make sure that you knew about things coming up this week because those are those are important things Peloton birthdays there's only one birthday this week on April 6th it's Allie Love happy birthday Allie Love so if you see her this week show her some Allie Love <laughs> that sounds kind of dirty when I say it like that <laughs> don't I mean it dirty. like that ew my apologies <laughs> And coming up after this, we're going to talk to Tammy Cunnington all about taking her special Paralympian bike into the studio first time ever. Not her Paralympian. She used it in the Paralympics, right? No, she used it to train for it. Okay. She's a Paralympian swimmer. So no, she didn't. <laughs> She's a swimmer. She just trained on the bike. Oh, the other than that, I got it right. <laughs> Tammy's awesome. Listen she to the is. interview. It's a great interview. <laughs> and it's amazing the things that she can do. Absolutely. So you should definitely stick around and check it out. Checking in with the Peloton community. Joining us today via the magic of ZoomTube is Tammy Cunnington. Now, the particularly astute <laughs> listeners might remember her from episode 157. Yeah, it's it's been a bit. It was 2020. Yeah. 
before uh, or in no, the middle? In the middle is May in the of middle 2020. Of all the craziness. So <laughs> we were doing all of our episodes wearing masks. <laughs> <laughs> even by Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> to be safe. Better safe than sorry. So, so uh, welcome back. Yes, welcome back. We're so happy to have you. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate you asking me back. Of course. I am. Um, now, when we talked to you last time, you were ramping up for the Tokyo Paralympics, right? Now, yes. I know that all the craziness with. Um, covid changed protocols and things like that did it change anything else about like that experience for you um well it changed it by a year i thought, I thought okay so i thought so <laughs> yeah. but i wasn't sure <laughs> when we were talking yeah when we were talking i didn't yet know nothing had been officially changed so i was preparing to race in a pool without a pool to train in <laughs> which would have led me to peloton um so then I, I don't know now the timing of everything, but they did postpone 2020 to 2021. Um, so I did end up having lots of time, but still lots of chaos uh, to get ready for Tokyo. Um, the province that I live in, we opened and closed and opened and closed again. And uh, it was easy to train when all my competition or like, I should say, easy not to train when all my competition couldn't train either. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when, my, yeah. <laughs> when my province closed the pools and I was the only one in Canada that wasn't in a pool, then it got a little bit more harried, a little bit more stressful. Um, but fortunately, things went well and I did make the team and I did compete in Tokyo. And then I retire actually right after my last race in Tokyo. Oh, wow. Right. Wow. So is it, um, did you just decide it's time? Like I'm, I'm done or was there anything else that like you were like precipitated that retirement? No, it was just time. Um, in Paris sport, we compete in classifications so that we're, you know, in groups of people who are most have the most similar abilities or disabilities as us. And uh, my classification is quite broad. We're not as similar as, some of the classifications and um so it was a it was pretty challenging and i knew that going into tokyo and so i just decided to make that you know the, the celebration of making the team under extra circumstances and just really go and and enjoy tokyo and you know swim the best that i could swim and have the most fun i could fun i could have and then retire after that so <laughs> I mean, yeah, not many people can say they've retired from the Olympics. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty well, I mean, awesome. I could say it. Yeah, it just, oh, well, yeah it but it wouldn't be, be true. Yeah, but I could say it. Yeah. I think that's pretty amazing. I think you're, I think you're pretty badass. <laughs> so I guess, I guess, um, uh, how, how did, well, I guess I should set the stage. So recently, um, I saw that you were in the New York studio and uh, you were able to ride your your bike in the studio. How did that all come to be? That's like a first. Yeah, it, it was really exciting. And it's, it's kind of a long story, but um, it was really fun to bring my hand cycle with me to New York and be in the studio and be set up there and be able to ride with with everybody else in that same class. And so what actually, like I said, it's a bit long, but um, in October I went to Greece uh, to go to a retreat that Christine Dercole was putting on in Greece. And um, I didn't really know much about it. I was just like somebody on one of the Peloton Facebook pages, which I never look at, <laughs> it happened to pop up and was like, who's going to Greece with Christine? And I'm like, who's going to Greece with Christine? I don't know. What's happening? <laughs> I'm going to Greece, and so I just uh, decided to sign up. Um, my husband wanted to go to Greece, but not couldn't go as many days, so it was also a good chance I could go for like 10 days, and then he could come for 10 days, so I would get longer time. So I went to Greece, met Christine, along with all the rest of the uh, people at the retreat. There were 25 of us, and we just had a really great five, six days in Greece. We connected and bonded really strongly, and um, we've had this running you know, message groups since then. And somebody put one of our, one of our group put in there was like, Hey, I'm working in New York in February. You know, I'm going to ride in the studio on February 25th. Who wants to come? And again, it was like, I've never been to New York. Yeah. I'm going to New York. <laughs> <laughs> so We all, all 25 of us show back up in New York together. Um, anyway. So, so once I found out the group was going, Christine was going to hold a ride for us. Then I started to work on, finding out like how I could I knew I could get my bike there but if Peloton could make space I didn't know what the studio really looked like it sure. looks much different than it looks on the 
on the on-demand classes. Um, so Christine worked with her producer and with Peloton staff, and uh, they made made a plan. It took a few months to get all the details worked out, but made a plan. And so I showed up on Wednesday with my bike, went in on the Thursday to set it up, and they made a space. It just took they took two bikes out, so there was one less Peloton bike in the studio to have room for my bike, and I just brought my trainer and my my bike and rode the class with my Greece crew and with Christine. So, and again, being the only the first hand cyclist to ride in li- live in studio, and um, it was a really great opportunity for advocacy and include proper true inclusion and all the rest so wow Absolutely. i just got goosebumps yeah, yeah. so <laughs> what all goes into moving your your bike is it kind of, was it built with the thought of of transporting it in mind or did was that kind of like a hey let's do that um oh i i competed in triathlon before Sw- switching to swimming and so okay. i did had travel with a bike and a race chair and my regular chair okay so moving <laughs> your bike wasn't like a daunting task for you no i uh, just a it took a few more pieces because um my it's it's about seven feet long and so i couldn't just put it in my little mini app my husband needed to take me to the airport and then i needed someone same to pick me up in the airport um i couldn't just hop in an uber with it so, sure um, for, fortunately one of the people from our group was from New York, lives in New York and had an SUV. So she picked me up, she took me, she kept my bike overnight and then took me to Peloton. So it wasn't as, it wasn't too bad. Um, we just, you know, I just had to get kind of get it ready for travel, but we actually keep it mostly together. We find it's easier and more the airline. Can, if they can see it, how, what it is, they maybe are a little bit more careful with it. For sure. They pack. Um, yeah i that um, makes sense i in my head i was just like well if i you know if you were going to bring your own peloton to the peloton studio that i'm just like that sounds like a nightmare <laughs> and so i was just trying to yeah. wrap my head around so, what that procedure looks like you know this is my outdoor like t- just a regular outdoor bike that i just set onto a trainer a, there's a special hand bike trainer that we set it on so it's there's no like electronics i just took the chain off to make sure the cables didn't get wrapped up and the gearing was okay things like that so it's not as hard as uh if you were going to bring an actual peloton bike (laughs) and so i don't have any um like i don't have power or cadence things like that um but that didn't matter i just ride based on effort and i use the gears for my increasing my resistance or decreasing my resistance so well so that was your first ride in the studio then Mm-hmm, absolutely. What yeah. you, I, Thank God she was able to book a reservation through the new system. After all that, that would have been. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like maybe maybe Christine had some pull on that one. <laughs> we were we were all booked in. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's really cool that all twenty five of you were able to come together again. And I know there's another mm-hmm. retreat coming up. Um, I can't remember what country it's to, but it's I know in there's Switzerland. Switzerland. Are you going to that one too? No, I'm not going to that one, unfortunately, but uh, I'm sure everyone who does will have a great time as well. Absolutely. And so uh, tell us about your very first experience in the studio. What did you think? Did you like it? Did you what what went through your head? Uh, it was it was really fun. Like I went in a little bit before the rest of the group just to make sure because the, um, the Peloton staff set my bike up for me, but just to make sure everything was running smooth before sure. Christine came in and uh it's a really, I don't. It looks, it's very, looks very different than it does when you're riding on demand. It's quite a bit smaller inside than I expected it to be, but and it's dark and the music is already playing, so the atmosphere is really fun. We did like, um, if you saw my Instagram, shot a few videos, took some fun pictures with some like fun purple lighting and different glowy, <laughs> glowiness. And, yeah, it was really. And then once my my crew came in because I'd had a chance to you know share a lot of my story with them over the time in Greece and since then by text and facetime and thing excuse me things like that so um they knew uh my purpose too that it wasn't about attention for myself but attention for inclusion and hand cyclists and people with disabilities and things like this it was a really the atmosphere was really fun i'm sure it would be in any class but it was really really high energy with this group you know my group there for sure Um, and then when christine came in of course it was it was just uh so much fun so much fun with the music and the group and 
uh, you know, she came in and let me come come down on the floor because I sit almost on the floor on my hand bike. So she came down, let me take a selfie. Aww, and we had, like, that's cool. I saw time. she. I saw she tried your bike out too. She sat yeah, on her. I, how, how special! I asked her um, when we were we talking. Anyway, I guess it was just before the class. I said, "Oh, you should you should try it if you want to." Like, I knew she, she's much taller than I am. I'm a very very child sized person, but <laughs> um, we could still make it work. She just had to move where she put her feet and stuff. But um, so she gave it a little try, and we had some you know had a chance to have a conversation about it and. Uh, about the you know future and what I would like to see in the world as well as in Peloton and things like this. So it was really, it was really meaningful and fun and exciting all wrapped up together. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say you were talking about how it was great for the idea of of awareness and inclusion, but also like it's okay to just say you want to. Yeah, right. Like it can be bold. Like, it, know, can like, be bold it's, it, can, it can just be like it looks fun, and I would like to be in the studio too. Yeah, like that's. I yeah. think I think it's so cool that not only you got to, but like that you were the first person that got to try a hand bike. Like I just, it's so special. You know, that's just a really special thing. It's also like it's. I'm surprised it's taken this long for that to occur um and so to your point i hope that we get to see more of those uh those instances i hope there are i hope peloton figures out a way to you know make that open to more people this was clearly a special kind of event um that that christine had to help put together for all of you to come together and make sure that everybody was able to join the class because it's so hard for people just to sign up um and my guess is when people hear this they might get frustrated or discouraged because they may not be able to to do that and and i i would just say that that you know it's it's one of those things that they have to try it before they can get better at it so i'm glad that the trying it has occurred and i'm hoping the getting better now occurs (laughs) absolutely i think it's a really you know we keep talking about representation matters and uh, a lot of times it's still uh, people like myself or people who are wheelchair users are still not fully a part of that conversation or it's something special for us. And I don't want it. I don't want to go to a class with only other people in hand cycles. That's like that's where we were 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Now we need to be beyond that and do what we did this Saturday where everyone else was on their Peloton bike and I was on my hand bike or, you know, five of us are hand bikes and five are like whatever. Right. Just that full integration and mix is what I'm looking for. I want activities that can be done by both people. Like here's the option if you're standing, but here's the option if you're sitting instead of this class is just for people in chairs, right? Like I really want that. Um, I want the world to start to come together because that's when people like myself would just be seen at the grocery store as just another person at the grocery store instead of, oh, look at that lady at the, in the wheelchair at the grocery store. Right. Right? Like uh, I don't want that. I want it just to be like, Hey, she's, you know, so-and-so's at the grocery store, right? Like Tammy's at the grocery store instead of it being something different. And until we can do these things together at the same time and it just be, okay, Tammy's using our arms, we're using our legs, but that's the only difference. And to me, that's, that's true inclusion and where the world should be heading and where I'd like to see things go. I think that's beautiful. And, and, and something that I think, I think most of us just take for granted, you know, it's like we don't we don't really think about how that feels to not be included. And and so I'm really glad that you're you're sharing that. And I'm glad that 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 you're sharing what you would like that to look at like like because I could sit here and say what inclusion looks like all day, but I'm not the person that's sitting in your place. You need to be saying that. That's that's why it's so important. I think that's great. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, I'm hoping like, you know, maybe there's a mom with a a kid that might have disabilities who doesn't know yet about a hand bike and she takes that class and her kid is there like look mom like look what i can do Uh, um you know and just open the world because there's so many more things for people like me now than there were when i was first injured like i was hurt 41 years ago and so there weren't hand bikes and there weren't um you know well there wasn't obviously peloton but there weren't all of these new opportunities and um so i really hope that the kids now who are, you know, newly injured or born with um, physical challenges know about their opportunities right away so they can already take advantage of all of these things that make them fit with their peers. Like they can get a hand bike and go ride with their kids, their friends in the street, or um, they can take a weight training class and just do the arms or, you know, whatever the case may be. I want 
I want their life to be simpler than my life was <laughs> growing up in a chair. Yeah. Yeah, that makes total sense. It always it always strikes me that every time Logan starts a class that he always describes himself and like what he's wearing and and it always stands out to me because I feel like to your point about like if we all just did things like that it wouldn't be uh we have to do things like that it would just be we just do it it's just like you said yeah. we just you just do it without thinking and um i think i think those I think those little acts of that that we've made some very tiny steps forward of of being better about the whole company being able to be inclusive and they seem Peloton seems to be truly committed to it. Um, so I, I hope that I hope that the things that you told them uh, I hope move forward. I hope that you were able to push them on the way. That's really cool. Yeah, I've been nudging them a little bit and been giving them lots of winkies in my Instagram, trying to get their attention and be like, hey, like, like I've been teasing them about wanting to come and do a guest uh, instructor spot and just <laughs> see how it happens. And because I don't need to just instruct leg, but I can tell you how to do cadence and power and um, all of that. Even though I'm using my arms, I can still tell people how to do it with their legs. So um, that would be definitely the ultimate to see a hand cyclist instructing Peloton like bikers as well. And just to keep growing forward, grow, build on what they've done with Logan and continue on that path. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So were, um, uh, were the cameras able to capture you in class? Are you visible in the class? Or you said your bike sits lower, yeah. so I didn't know if that presented a problem for them. Uh, my bike is lower, but you can see me. I haven't taken the class since or haven't watched it, but I've had I've seen comments on Facebook and um, a couple of our group have taken it and you can see me. Oh, cool. uh, they moved like, you know, usually the instructor has the computer beside them uh -huh. um, and they moved that for this class so that Christine could see me because I because of where I sit down low. So she didn't have her computer for that class. So I'm right up in the front on the side beside her where there's no because in the studio, there is a couple of curb like raised platforms where the bike sit. Um, and so that was the, the perfect spot where my bike could go where there was no impediments of platforms and curb cut or curves. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. What was the class? Did the class have a theme? Did it or like a fun um, like a theme a or something? 30, no, it was a 30 minute ride class. Gotcha. That's a uh, climb class. Sorry. <laughs> my words are not coming to me properly today. It was a 30 minute climb ride is what I was trying to say. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm so glad you got to do that. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, do you, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tom. Oh, I was just going to uh, switch a little bit. So if you nope, had some. Okay. Fine. So you said you went to, to Greece with Christine and we've seen, was this one of her, what is it? It's word. The word shops. Word yeah. Shops. Is it, was it a word mm -hmm. shop? Yeah, it was a five day retreat of word shop. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about that? We've seen her. We've talked about them in the, pa in the past, like just when she announces them, but we don't really know what it looks like to attend one. Could you kind of walk us through what, what you get? Yeah, so a lot of it is um, the main focus is Christine working with everyone to let me, let me try to find her words um, to stop basically to stop the negative self-talk and and to switch things if if something is going on in our head that's negative to switching it to being more positive and you know of course everything with christine is based around i am i can i will i do and so we work on building our own mantras like that and adding words at the end of each of those sentences um and so she just does different different group activities different writing that we're doing on our own but that keep building on those mantras and on those positive words and um, and just encourage people to be able to come back to that easier when things are going not the way they maybe want to. And it kind of already fits in with a lot of the philosophies and things that I speak about um, when I do keynotes is that, you know, we are going to have bad days or we're going to have things that happen that we're not, you know, not every day is going to be perfect, but it's how you handle every day that's not perfect that makes the next day better. Um, and so my mantra is passion equals victory. So I kind of wove it in like, I am, I can, I do, I, I am, I can, I will, I do, therefore passion equals victory. I kind of combined uh, the work that Christine did with her words uh, into my words. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Do you spend like the whole five days with, with other people, like with all 25, like, do you guys spend every moment together? Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, not every moment, but we had like certain time that was workshop time and then we had dinners together that were planned um then we had days that had free time and then we did some like off 
resort activities that so we, we went in Greece we went on a boat ride one day and then they did a couple bikes I didn't take my hand bike to Greece it was a, a little too many flights and <laughs> too far but um, they did a couple rides and then we did a big um, like uh, we went to a really beautiful beach and then had a picnic up on this hill with this amazing these amazing views over look where we also did our one of our workshops up at this picnic site so Wow. Just different different activities and different things. <laughs> That's cool. I like that they still have time baked in to see Greece because yeah. you don't want to go all the way to Greece and then sit and, you know, in, in a, meetings in all a day. banquet room of a Hilton, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it was not at a Hilton. <laughs> yeah, it sounds you know, pretty amazing. There was amazing. lots of time to, to see, like, yeah, there was, it was in this beautiful area, and there was, like I said, a good mix of free time, time with Christine, time with our group. You know, everyone got a chance to chat with Christine kind of one-on-one a little bit, too, and so it, yeah, it was really good. Do you, um, is, would you consider that Christine is your favorite instructor? Do you, do you hang out, like, when you take rides or classes with Peloton, do you kind of spread yourself across all of different Peloton instructors, or...? Yeah, I ride with different ones depending on, um, originally it was depending on what I was trying to do to get ready for Tokyo. Right. Um, so it depended on what type of class. And now it's more like uh, now I'm training for fitness and longevity and all those good things. So now I have more flexibility. Um, but I love riding with Jess King and I do a lot of power zones. So I've ridden a lot of mat classes and more recently some Dennis classes. And then when I'm weight training, I mostly weight train with Adrian and Maddie. <laughs> They're my favorites. <laughs> I'm just curious when you were when you were in training for the Paralympics, like what sort of uh, what sort of classes and instructors did you find were beneficial for different goals you were trying to achieve? Like what were the goals um, who worked well with it? Uh, so some days it was recovery because I was spending so much time on my bike without a pool that I couldn't just go max effort every every time on my bike. Um, so the recovery days, I would do some of the low impact rides or some of the Christine rides that have quieter music, like that are a little bit calmer. Um, and then I was doing early on, I did power zone because I had, once we knew Tokyo was canceled and I, we knew I had time to or postpone, we knew I had time to build up. I went back to base building to really, really build my aerobic base. So I did a ton of power zone endurance. So just like the zone two and three um, efforts. So I did a lot of mat classes because I also needed to, well, preferred to ride 60 minutes. So at least 60 minutes. So his classes were often an hour and I could just get into that zone two and three. And then when I was preparing for sprints, because most of my races were sprint distance, like 50 meter distance, then I would do more of the interval classes. So I did some of Robin's Tabatas and um, there was one class of Hannah Franks and that I did over and over just because it had the right timings of what I was prepping to do. It had some two minutes for my IM. It had some uh, one minute sprints for my 50 meter and some 30 seconds, which are always just good to add in. So that's cool. I, uh, I really, really love hearing what you said about going back and building your endurance when you had time because I feel like so many people myself included we feel like okay well we've done that so now we need to just get hard like we just need to do harder and harder like go hard go hard and I think that that like somebody training at that level like you're you're at a very very peak level you're like no I'm gonna I've got time I'm gonna go back to the endurance piece of it and I'm gonna Mm -hmm. kill that before I get to the intense part and I think that's really really key yeah and it's such an important part that we tend to neglect because a lot of times it's more fun to ride really hard it <laughs> is <laughs> to do base building but your really hards get less hard all the time if you don't have the good base behind it and so we talk about it in swimming too is um is you don't want you can't swim hard all the time because then that effort just keeps dwindling because you're not recovering and you'd so you need to swim really, really light when you need to swim light and you need to swim really, really hard when you need to swim hard. And if you're, if you don't do the light and the hard, then everything winds up in the middle. So you end up kind of just training at the same pace all the time and then you don't see improvements on either end. Yes. So we call it swimming, swimming or biking in the mud. Like when you're just, everything's at like 145 heart rate, 150 and just like 
you, you don't really go much faster. You don't really go much slower, but you also don't make any gains doing it. Yeah, that's I think that's really important to tell people. <laughs> yeah, I think people get so focused on like it doesn't count if you're not maxed Going, out yep. in some capacity. So it's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's 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 sometimes it's hard to keep that in mind or if you have other goals like you know a lot of people are, are they want to lose weight and, and if you're you know and if you and you feel like well i don't want to waste one second on yeah. on on my exercise i gotta bring every second out of it so i can get there right and it's like sometimes you just need to be there yeah sometimes you just need to back off and know that a lighter ride today makes for a better ride tomorrow absolutely do you have any um, any projects that you're working on that you would like to share with anybody? Um, I'm kind of just been living a little bit of retired life um, for the last. It, it was it took me a good year probably to wind down from <laughs> Tokyo and to like not be competing and not be training. I bet that. that has to be a culture <laughs> shock. Because how long did you do yeah. that for? Like you did it for a long time, uh, right? Yeah, because I was on the national team for swimming for seven or eight years. And then prior to that, I've been doing triathlon for over 10 years. Um, so it had been a lot of like always time. Like I always had deadlines. I always had race dates. I always had those things. And so it took me, I, I knew that I was ready to be retired. I was 99% sure I was ready and, and I was ready, but it still takes adjustment time. Um, so now that I've been like I'm further out from retirement, I've been focusing as same the world is more open all the time. Uh, I've been doing back to doing some more keynotes, more in person um, presentations, and so that's kind of my focus. If I can do one or two a month of uh, keynote speeches and and then travel and do the things I love on top of it <laughs> or in combined with it, if it works out, then um, that's my focus right now. That's that's awesome. Yeah. That sounds like a pretty pretty sweet life right there. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find a mix of uh, peace and passion, and you know, advocacy and and uh, work like that is still my passion. Uh, but I don't have to be quite full out like I was at other times. I can also have a quiet bike or go for a paddleboard instead of full training and find some peace in the mountains or in Greece or in New York. If you can find peace in New York. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, was it was it fun training for the Paralympics and is it more fun now that you don't do you feel like you have less pressure so you can enjoy it in a way that you couldn't previously? Yeah, I I loved training at that level. I loved going in and knowing like these were my targets for the day this was the plan this like this workout was going to leave me on the side of the pool gasping for air <laughs> like i loved every second of that um but i do like not having the pressure so i can still do workouts like that if i want to but um it's the, the mental pressure and it's mostly that i even put on myself as much as anybody else but um just that constant pressure of knowing that you're counting, you're always counting days, right? right? It's always, and they start counting days to Paralympics, like 200 and some days out or even more. Sometimes it's like right after Tokyo, they start the countdown clock for Paris, right? <laughs> like, and it's too much counting down. It's, it's, it's um, like presidential it is, elections. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just so stressful when you see those numbers like tick down so fast. So that part I don't miss and I don't miss the nerves like as much as i love to race i still had until i got in the water to warm up once i got into warm up i usually settled right down but prior to that i had had a ton of nervous energy and i don't miss that <laughs> i get that i totally get that i get i get nervous of all kinds of things so i you? do feel you <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> do you get nervous when you do your keynotes are you you're you don't mind speaking in front of people or? yeah i don't mind speaking I, once in a while, if it's something really different or I've changed um, my presentation or something like that, I'll maybe have a little bit, but only for only when I first get on stage, not for like three days beforehand. Like oh, that's good. Before. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us again. We really appreciate it. Before we let you go, remind everybody where they can find you on the uh, on the interwebs. And remind oh. them of your leaderboard name, too, so they can follow for you sure. if you would like to be followed. <laughs> yeah. That's great. I'm uh, on my leaderboard name is Paralympian TJ. 
And then um, on Instagram, I'm at TJ underscore Cunnington. And that's the only social media that I'm on really is Instagram. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us. It's so great to hear your your visit to the studio story and that it, you had such a great time. That's it is. great. It is. It sounds really oh, magical. Thank you so I appreciate it. Yeah, it was it was worthwhile in many ways. Good. Thank you again. Flip out. So I guess that brings this episode to a close. Uh, until next week, where can people find you? People can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Crystal D. O'Keefe. They can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and the Peloton leaderboard at Clip Out Crystal. And you can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. You can find the show online, facebook.com slash The Clip Out. While you're there, like the page, join the group. And of course, don't forget our YouTube channel at YouTube dot com slash the clip out so that's it for this one thanks for tuning in and until next time keep pedaling and running and rowing and napping <laughs> <laughs>